cognizant to the needs of our learners, parents, and teachers, the Department of Education provided us with powerful tools for productivity that will allow us to foster critical thinking skills, problem-solving skills, communication and collaboration skills to be compassionate, responsible global citizens. Join us and discover new ideas in our series of professional development training program with the ICTS at Tech Unit and Microsoft Education Philippines. Together, we will equip our learners and empower our fellow educators for a dynamic future. Para sa bata, para sa bayan, at para sa guro. Sulong Edukalidad. Magandang araw, Sir Wilbur po, at your service. Narito ang itulay upang gabayan ka sa inyong pag-aaral upang lubos na maunawaan ang iba't ibang paksa o subject. Ang itulay ay isang free online tutorial class na pinangungunahan ng ICTS Educational Technology Unit sa pumumuno ni Undersecretary Alain Del B. Pasqua. Ang programang ito ay hindi lamang para sa mga bata, kundi ito rin ay magsisilbing gabay sa mga magulang at mga guro kung paano nila ituturo o gagabayan sa bawat asignatura ang kanilang mga anak o mga estudyante. Sa kasalukuyan, ang self-learning module mula sa regyon ng Calabarzon at kilala sa tawag na pivot ang ginagamit sa ating itulay online class. Kaya ano pang hinihintay ninyo? Ihanda na ang inyong mga ballpen o lapis, papel o kwaderno at samahan kaming itulay ang pagkatuto para sa bawat batang Pilipino. Sama-sama tayong magtutulungan para malampasan ang mga hamon sa panahong ito. Halina't matuto kasama ang inyong online tutor sa oras na ito. Good afternoon po sa lahat, lalong-lalo na po sa ating mga mag-aaral at mga magulang who are watching our live stream of Itulay Online Tutorial. At pa-shout out din po sa mga teachers ng Ormac City Senior High School with our school principal, Mrs. Brenda P. Marolenia, together with our assistant school principals, Ma'am Maribel Bandejo, and of course, to um, Ma'am Cheryl Catado. Okay? And also to the Schools Division Office of Ormac City with our Assistant Schools Division Superintendent, Dr. Mario Roji P. Sumbilon. Okay, so welcome po sa lahat ng ating online viewers. Okay, magandang hapon po sa inyong lahat. I am Tutor June, and join me today as we learn very important topics for inquiries, investigations, and immersion. Again, this applied subject for grade 12 is a culminating activity of our research discussions in PR1 and PR2 through qualitative and quantitative research implementations. Or we can also do mixed methods research. Okay? So, sino na ba ang nasa live stream po natin? Okay. Can I see comments from our students and our parents? Okay. And today's exciting session class will lead us to understand our topic on quarter three, week four, and still on the learning area. Okay identifying the problem and asking the question. Since based on the three eyes curriculum guide, okay, this topic is good for a three week discussion. And remember class that in our last week's tutorial session, you were able to state no, research questions and write a problem statement of a quantitative study. So for this session, you are expected to have the ability to formulate qualitative research questions Okay, as well as to state the significance of the study. And for the information of everyone, we are basing our tutorial session today with the self-learning module from DepEd Bataan on inquiries, investigations, and immersion, quarter three, 
module two, no? Identifying the problem and asking the question with the main author, Dr. Marilu A. Bogtong. Okay, I would like to thank also Dr. Chudrico Cipilino Jr., Education Program Supervisor in the Curriculum and Learning Management Division, DepEd Regional Office 8, as well as to Dr. James Pedrera, a senior high school teacher no, in Alang Alang National High School, for the technical assistance given to our tutorial session today. Okay, welcome po sa lahat ng mga students. Okay, nandito na po si Rocky Espejon Castillo, Oliver Managbanag, Jean Kenneth Garciano, Menard Miguel from Cabanatuan City Senior High School. We have Hazel Ann Garciano from Ormac City Senior High School. Okay. We have Samson, okay, Samson from Samson Polytechnic College of Davao. Okay. And Students from Ormac City Senior High School, Brazil Joy Dai Dai, Lorenzo Aureliano, and Huge Butch Templo. Okay. So recall class that in the introduction chapter of your research paper must contain four parts. Okay. The background of the study, statement of the problem, significance of the study, and scope and delimitation previously you have learned some specific guidelines in constructing the background of the study as well as on how to write the statement of the problem of a quantitative research okay so today you will learn on how to write the statement of the problem of a qualitative research and also we will learn on how to write the next section in chapter one of your research paper which is the significance okay significance of the study it will start let us have this preliminary activity you are going to read and understand the given research scenario and then you will answer the questions that follow by choosing the letter of the correct answer and write it in the comment section okay and please do not forget class to indicate the item that you are answering since you will answer three questions okay let us begin. Allow me first to read the passage or the research scenario. A group of student researchers from Jose C. Payomo Jr. Memorial High School intends to conduct a study on the effectiveness of the Tobacco Free Generation or TFG program in Dinalupihan, Bataan. Okay? Medical doctors, nurses, and volunteers in Singapore started the said program in 2016 and was adopted by Bataan in the same year. Okay? TFG founder Dr. Kung Heng Nong considered Bataan as the first province in the Philippines to adopt this campaign. According to Kung 2018, TFG aims to educate and encourage the youths not to be part of the tobacco-free generation. Okay? Question number one. What is the objective of the study in the given selection? Is it A, to uncover the history of the TFG program? B, to measure the effectiveness of the TFG policies? Letter C, to identify the effects of the TFG to the community? D, to solicit the experiences of smokers and non-smokers? Again, write the letter of your answer in the comment section okay okay we have jean kenneth garciano answered b julian dihanyo answered b Paulo Tomamak also answered letter B. Okay, the correct answer is letter B. That is correct, no? The objective of the study, of the given study, is to measure the effectiveness of the TFG or the tobacco free generation policies. Okay, let us proceed to question number two. Who do you think will benefit from this study? A, community. B, local government, C, future researchers, and D, all of the above. Again, write the letter of your answer in the comment section.
Okay? For number two, what's the correct answer? Maximino Kalagi Jr. answered letter D. Paulo Tomamak answers D. Hazel Ann Garciano answers D. The correct answer is letter D, all of the above, okay? The community and the local government in Barangay Dinalopihan, as well as the future researchers, will benefit from the given study. Okay? Last question. Why do you think there is a need to conduct this study? A, to gauge the status of the program. B, to see wh whether the program needs revision. C, to measure the compliance level of the residents. And D, all of the above. Okay. Again, please write your answer for question number three in our comment section. Let me check your answers. For number three, the correct answer is letter... Number three, letter D, all of the above, okay? So there is a need plus to conduct this study in order to gauge the status of the program, which is the TFG or the Tobacco-Free Generation Program, and to see whether the program needs revision as well as to measure no, the compliance level of the residents in Barangay Dinalupihan in the implementation of the TFG program. So congratulations, class, for answering it all correctly. We can use this information, okay? We can use this information later as we go on with our tutorial session today. Okay, now class, same in the formulation of quantitative research questions, we have also guidelines that we need to follow in formulating our qualitative research questions. And Crestwell 2015 enumerated some of these guidelines. Number one, begin the research questions with the words what or how, no? To convey an open and emerging design. Yes, class, no, the typical qualitative research question begins with words such as what, or how. For example, you may ask what happened over time, no? Or what was the meaning to people of what happened? Okay? But if you start, okay, if you start with the word why, okay, it implies that the researcher is trying to explain why something occurs. And this suggests to us probable cause and effect thinking that we associate with quantitative research. And that limits the explanations also, okay? So rather than opening them up for the participants' views, okay? So we will not um, use why, no, in our research questions for qualitative. Second is to focus only on a single phenomenon or concept, okay? As a study develops over time, Factors will emerge that may influence this single phenomenon, but qualitative researchers begin with a single focus to explore in great detail. So before starting making your qualitative research class, you may ask yourself this question, okay? What is the one single concept that you want to explore in your qualitative study? Okay, number three, use exploratory verbs that convey the language of the emerging design, okay? These exploratory verbs class will tell the reader that the study will, for example, I'm sorry, will do the following, okay? For example, if you report or reflect, no, the stories of the participants in a study, you are actually doing a narrative research, okay? When doing a phenomenology or a phenomenological study, you describe the experiences, okay? Or describe the essence of the experience in your study, okay? Now, if your goal is to discover a new theory from existing theories, okay? That is actually in a grounded theory, okay? And if you seek to understand Okay, if you seek to understand a particular tribe or a particular ethnic minority 
it is actually an ethnography or an ethnographical study. Okay. Lastly, if you want to explore a process, okay, explore, let's say you are going to explore a process of a phenomenon, you are actually doing a case study. Okay, so take note, class, of these underlined exploratory verbs because we can use this later in the formulation of our qualitative central question. Okay, and furthermore, class, you need to use these exploratory verbs as non directional, okay, rather than directional words, since we know that directional words class suggests quantitative research such as affect, influence, impact cause and or associate or relate no, the given variables. Number four, expect research questions to evolve no, and change during the study in a manner consistent with the assumptions of the emerging design. Because in qualitative studies class, the questions are under continual review and re reformulation. Pareho sa grounded theory ng study, okay? Unlike in quantitative research, qualitative research questions can be changed, no? As you go along the research process, okay? This approach may be problematic for individuals accustomed to quantitative designs in which the research questions remain fixed and never change all throughout the study. Lastly, use open-ended questions without reference to the literature or theory unless otherwise indicated by a qualitative strategy of inquiry. Okay? Now, allow me, class, to present to you a typical script for a qualitative central question. Let us have an ethnographic study as an example, having a research title, Cultural health, care, uh, cultural health care beliefs and practices of ethnic Filipinos, an ethnographic study. Okay? Excuse me, class. So again, the research title is Cultural Health Care Beliefs and Practices of Ethnic Filipinos, an ethnographic study. Okay, this study is actually from the Study of Evelyn Gray, 2016, from West Visaya State University. Now, we can create our statement of the problem to be, the study aims to, okay? The study aims to, okay? However, other quality researchers also write the type of the study, okay? Kung if ilalagay natin yung type sa study, we can say the purpose of this ethnographic study Okay, so we can actually write that. Next is to write the exploratory and non-directional verb. Okay, so we, we say is to understand. Okay, since this is the um, exploratory verb for an ethnographic study. Okay, then the cultural healthcare beliefs and practices. Okay, so this is the central phenomenon of the study. So we write the cultural healthcare beliefs and practices, okay? And then we write our research participants of ATAS living in Central Philippines, okay? Since this in this qualitative study, we focused on the ATAS, no? Living in this part of the country, in, in uh, we have in Central Philippines. Okay, others also write class the number of years or uh, the duration of the study. If it is a longitudinal study, for example, uh, you may write for the past 10 years or let's say for the past five years. Okay, and then lastly, we write the purpose. Okay, that is to know the direction of help which may be given to the ATAS in the rural communities, okay? So we have already created the aim of the study or the qualitative central question for this ethnographic study, okay? Again, this is our qualitative central question. And here is our sample, or here are our sample research questions, 
Okay? Let us start with the cultural healthcare beliefs. Okay? In here, we can create one qualitative research question, which is on the cultural healthcare beliefs no, of ATAS. So we can ask the question, what are the healthcare beliefs accompanying the life cycles of ATAS in the rural communities? Okay? We can also ask a research question also for the ATAS healthcare practices. Okay, so we have, what are the healthcare practices of ATAS in the rural communities? Okay, now the researcher also class believes that a better understanding of the various healthcare uh, beliefs and practices of the ATAS in the rural communities is necessary as well as the factors affecting their beliefs and practices. So we can also ask this question, what are the factors affecting the ATAS healthcare beliefs and practices through time? Okay, so the findings of the study would surely give the direction of help which may be given to the ATAS no, in the rural communities. Okay, so do you understand class? Any questions in formulating our qualitative research questions? So don't worry, later we are going to practice formulating or writing no, our qualitative central question as well as the specific research questions given a qualitative study. Okay? Now, let us have first this activity class before we proceed to writing the significance of the study. The significance of the study, okay, uh, will be the um, the next section no, in writing our chapter one or introduction of our research paper. Okay? So we need to uh, do this activity for us to check no, whether you can already differentiate a quantitative from a qualitative research question. Okay? Now, using your knowledge on quantitative and qualitative researches, write one. If a quantitative research is suitable for the given question, then qual if it is qualitative, and quan or qual if the question can either be dealt with quantitatively or qualitatively. Okay? Are you ready, class? Okay, let us begin. For the research question number one, what are the challenges experienced by student athletes? Okay, is this a quantitative or a qualitative research question or either? Let me check. Again, you write quan for quantitative, qual for qualitative, quan or qual if it can be dealt with uh, quantitatively or qualitatively. Okay, we have Julie Andihanyo answered qual, Jean Kenneth Garciano qual, okay, His, Hazel Ann Garciano also answered qual. That is correct, okay? Specifically, this is actually a research question for a phenomenological study since the question asks for the challenges experienced no, by student athletes. Okay, let us have Research question number two. Are attitudes toward disasters and level of disaster awareness significantly associated? Is this a quantitative research question or is it a qualitative or either? Okay, we have... Uh, Ju Julie Andihanyo answered for number two, qual daw. Jesslyn Monte answered kwan. Jomar Formentera kwan. Maximino Kalagi Jr. kwan. Okay, Amari Joy Monyeza answered kwan. Okay, that is correct. The answer is kwan. Okay, since it is a quantitative research question specifically on correlational study since it, it, it asks on the association or the relationship of the variables, that is, attitude toward disasters and level of disaster awareness. 
Okay? And for our last question, what are the factors that affect the decision-making of parents regarding education of their children? Is this a quantitative research question or qualitative or either quantitative or qualitative? Okay? Let me check your answers. We have number three, qual. Sabi ni Julian de Golacion, uh, Julian de Hanyo, Judea de Golacion, Maximino Calagi Jr., Jesslyn Monte, Jane Wensita Dora, Joshua Villaver. Okay. Qual, qual daw, sir. Either, Maximino Calagi Jr. answered either, or pa Paolo Tomamak answered quan or qual. That is correct. Okay? So, this is actually a question class that can either be dealt with quantitatively or qualitatively. Okay? Pwede siyang for a uh, descriptive research question for quantitative research, or pwede din siyang i-ask for qualitative research. Okay? So, congratulations, class, for answering it all correctly. Okay, so now let us proceed in our discussion on the significance of the study. Okay. Now, when you write your research class, the goal in mind is to solve a problem, okay? Or to provide a better understanding of the problem so that the correct solutions can be arrived at. Therefore, your study is very much important to certain people, institution, or to a certain community. That is why it is also important class to write a significance of the study or significance of the study section no, in our research paper. And what is the significance of the study? Now, this section class in our research paper details the contribution or benefit that your study provides to different people and organizations, including the academic and other sectors of the society. So it determines the audience who will benefit from your study and explains how exactly will the results of the study be significant to them. Okay. Now here are some guidelines in writing the significance of the study section in our research paper. Okay. First is the significance of the study can be written topically or in the enumeration format. Okay, when we say topical arrangement, okay, this is done in paragraphs. So, puede paragraph form siya, and this is based on the weight no, of the individual contributions of our beneficiaries. But the most commonly used format in writing the significance of the study is the enumeration format. Okay, it is simply arranging the details according to the beneficiaries. In here, uh, we just list down all beneficiaries and how each of this group or beneficiaries will benefit from the given study. Okay. Now, for each beneficiary group, specifically describe how it will benefit, okay, from the findings of the study. So it can also be based on how you sequence your specific research questions. Okay. Now, lastly, we don't need to cite students, okay, in our significance of the study since it is understood that students will benefit from the research and also they are not in the position to implement recommendations. So we only need to include individuals, offices, or institutions, or any group of people who can do something to solve the problem, okay? For example, if your study is all about the lack of computers in school, then you do not include students as beneficiaries of your study because um, the students are not in the position to do something in order to solve the problem. Okay, You might consider including the administrators or the Department of Education and other stakeholders no? in, in the school. No? for your significance of the study because they are the ones who can provide solution to the lack of computers in a public school. Okay. Now, here are some of the useful phrases that you can use no, in writing this section. Okay. If you want to write your significance of the study 
in topical arrangement, okay, or in paragraph format, you may use this introductory phrases such as, this study will contribute to, or this study is beneficial in providing information which can be used as basis for providing solution to problems relative to the, okay? And if you want to use the enumeration format, okay, you may use some of these phrases like, the findings of the study will be useful to the following entities, or this study will benefit the following groups of individuals. Or you can write, the study offers benefits to the following. Okay, so notice, class, that there are different ways to write our significance of the study. So just choose which style no, you are comfortable with, okay? And you will find out many other ways in writing the significance of the study when you read research manuscripts from other institutions. Okay, now... Let us have this study class as our example in writing the significance of the study, okay? The research, the research title is Eco-Friendly Practice, Environmental Awareness of Senior High School Students and Eco-Friendly Programs in School, okay? This is from the self-learning uh, package of Sir James Pedrera, 2020. And here's an example significance of the study written in the enumeration format. So we can start with a phrase, the study on eco-friendly practices and environmental awareness of students and the eco-friendly programs present in Alang Alang National High School offers benefits to the following. Okay, so now class, after this general statement, we can write at least no, three beneficiaries for our significance of the study. So for this study, since it talks about eco-friendly programs and practices in a particular school, no, in Alang Alang National High School. So we may include teachers no, in the school or the school itself or the school administrators and the future researchers no, as our beneficiaries of the study. So we have, okay, teachers. The outcomes of this research will inform teachers about the eco-friendly practice and environmental awareness of students. As such, they will be able to design complementary activities that will reinforce the frequency of eco-friendly practice and level of environmental awareness of students. Okay, now for school or for school administrators, okay, with the information this research offers, the school will be able to plan and implement various programs that will help students develop eco-friendly practices and environmental awareness. Also, the school will be able to motivate teachers to integrate environmental themes in teaching. More importantly, the school will be able to Im implement sustainable eco-friendly projects. Okay, lastly, we have for future researchers. This can be used as a reference and tool in guiding the future researchers in conducting future related studies. Okay, so any questions class in writing the significance of the study? Okay, now let us apply what you have learned no, in our discussion in two activities. So we will have two activities to answer. And in our first activity, we are going to formulate a central question and specific research questions in a given qualitative study, okay? So are you ready, class? Okay, please type your answers in the comment section, okay? Now, we have here a phenomenological study by Pilinio T. and Pilinio L. 2018 from Borawan Comprehensive National High School, Division of Leyte, with a research entitled Challenges and Opportunities of Teaching Non-Major Subjects, Lived Experiences of Senior High School Teachers. Okay, now class, kindly formulate first the central question of this given study. And please type your answer in the comment section. Okay, so again, um, write the central question, 
okay, qualitative central question of this research title, Challenges and Opportunities of Teaching Non-Major Subjects, Lived Experiences of Senior High School Teachers. So since we have this clue here, lived experiences, so we know that this is a phenomenological study or a phenomenology. Okay, anyone who can uh, write their answers in our comment section. Okay. Sige daw, let me check if sino po ang makakasulat ng qualitative central question for this given phenomenological study. Okay, wait class. Okay. Okay. Sige. Let's have an example. Okay, let's have a kuan muna. Okay. I'll try I'll try first. And then um what you're going to do is um for the specific research question na lang, okay? For um uh, qualitative specific research questions. Okay, given this study or given this research title. Okay? So we write Okay? Given this um, qualitative research or a phenomeno phenomenological study, so we write, the study aims to, okay? So if we write the type of the study, so we can also say, this phenomenological study aims to, okay? Then, on say sunod, describe, okay? Nga uh, describe man? Bakit describe? Because um, since... We can use the exploratory verb describe because we know that this is a phenomenological study or a phenomenology. The highlights of the lived experiences and perspectives. Okay. Okay, which is the actually the central phenomenon of the study. Next is we write the research participants. Okay. That is of the senior high school teachers in Burawan district. DepEd Later Division. Okay, so that is our research participants. Okay, as they teach subjects which are not their major. Okay, so we may end up here. So pwede dito na lang, dito na lang tayo mag mag end, no? Sa pagsulat natin ng ating um, qualitative central question. But if um, the purpose of the study is given, okay? Let us say the purpose of the study is to formulate policies that would enhance um, the curriculum and delivery of instruction. So we say, okay, to formulate policies that would enhance curriculum and delivery of instruction. So we have created the aim of the study or the qualitative central question for our phenomenological study, okay? Now, Okay, next class, I want you to formulate specific qualitative research questions of this given study. You may type at least one lang, okay? One qualitative research question, please type it down in our comment section. So again, our research title is Challenges and Opportunities of Teaching Non-Major Subjects Lived Experiences of Senior High School Teachers. So we can create questions for the challenges and opportunities and the lived experiences of the senior high school teachers teaching non-major subjects. Again, please type at least one qualitative research question in our comment section for this given study. Okay, Maximino Kalagi Jr. asks, what are the challenges of teaching non-major subjects? That is correct. Very good, Maximino. Okay. Any other answers? Pwede siya. Okay. Any other answers, class? Okay. So we can actually um, write specific questions, specific qualitative research questions to be 
Okay? What are the highlights of the experiences, okay, of the senior high school teachers assigned to teach subjects which are not their major? Okay? Or we can ask, what are the challenges? Okay, just like what Maximino uh, mentioned, no? Uh, what are the challenges of teaching non-major subjects? Or what are the challenges they face no, in teaching non-major subjects? Okay? We also have, we can also write another question. Okay? How did they cope no, with the challenges? Or how did the um, senior high school teachers teaching non-major subjects um, cope no, with the challenges? And then, what meaning do teachers ascribe no, to those experiences? Okay. Because actually, after our for, for phenomenological study, one of our, um, let's say, qualitative analysis tool that we can use is the thematic analysis. Okay, so we can actually create themes, no, from their experiences. Okay, so congratulations, class, for being able to formulate qualitative research questions. Okay, um, we also have here. Okay, let me check. Jomar Formentera, okay, answered, what kind of lived experiences to the teachers to teach non-major subjects? Okay, so we can actually improve this question, no? Uh, Jomar, to make it qualitative. Okay, so, so congratulations for those students who answered um, or formulated specific research questions in this given um, qualitative research. Okay, so do you have any questions? Okay, now let us proceed to our last activity. So for this activity class, you are going to write the significance of the study of the following quantitative research, okay? The research title is Senior High School Students, Senior High School Students' Knowledge of Dengue Across Sectional Study, okay? So you may use the topical arrangement or the paragraph format, or you, you may use also the enumeration format. So pwede ring enumeration format or pwede paragraph format, okay? So... You may write at least one beneficiary and then indicate how beneficial is this study to this particular beneficiary. Okay, and then please write your answer in our comment section. Okay, so again, write the significance of the study of this given research title. Anyone? Give at least one beneficiary and, of course, um, the benefits that the beneficiary can get no, from the findings of the study. Okay, so let me present the written significance of the study in a paragraph format. So we can have... This study is beneficial in providing information which can be used as basis for providing solution to problems relative to the enhancement of students' knowledge of dengue. Okay, so the school and its administrators can use the information derived from the study to design school-based programs aimed at the improvement of students' dengue knowledge. Likewise, health professionals or healthcare professionals working on the dissemination of dengue-related information may use the findings of the study to develop different modalities of tapping into the dengue knowledge of students. Okay. Lastly, future researchers will be able to use the findings of this study as reference no, for future related research. Okay. Sige, let me check if meron ng mga sagot po. Okay, so congratulations class for being able to state no, the significance of the study of this quantitative research. Okay, so do you have any questions? Do you have any questions class for this activity? Naintindihan po ba? Okay, Jane Wensi Tadora answered, 
future researchers. This can be used as a reference and tool in guiding, in guiding them in conducting future-related studies. That's correct. Very good, no? Jane Wensi. Okay. So for your assignment class, okay, since this is three I's, you are going to write the statement of the problem of a qualitative research if you plan to conduct a qualitative research, okay? As well as um, formulate or state the significance of the study of your research by enumerating at least three agencies or organizations or groups of people that will benefit from, this, from the results of your research and briefly explain how each of them, okay, each of these beneficiaries will benefit from your study. You may post your answer or your, um, let's say, the significance of the study as well as your uh, research questions for qualitative research in our or in your FB timeline. And please use the hashtag, hashtag Itulai III significance. Again, the hashtag is hashtag Itulai III significance. Okay? So at iyan po ang ating online tutorial session sa linggong ito. See you po in our next tutorial se session, same time, same day. This has been your Itulai Tutor, Sir June, na nagiiwan ng katagang, The research of today shall speak the innovations of tomorrow. Thank you and happy researching! Sigurado ako na marami ka na namang natutuhan sa ating Itulay Tutorial Session ngayong araw. Tandaan, ito ay hindi lamang para sa ating mga mag-aaral, kundi pati rin sa ating mga minamahal na guro at mga magulang na kaagapay natin para maituloy ang pagkatuto sa kabila ng nararanasang pandemya. Patuloy ding sumubaybay sa DepEd TV para sa mga araling ginawang video episodes. Mapapanood ito mula lunes hanggang sabado, alas 7 ng umaga hanggang alas 7 ng gabi sa inyong mga telebisyon. Abangan sa lunes mula alauna ng tanghali ang iba pang aralin sa ating Itulay Free Online Tutorial Session sa Science. I-like and subscribe at manatiling nakasubaybay sa ating Itulay Tutorial Session sa DepEd EdTech Unit FB page at Educational Technology Unit channel sa YouTube at sa DepEd Tayo at DepEd Philippine Social Media Accounts. Paalam!